Hi friends, Wizdi here. Welcome to a new Rage Shadow Legends video. Today, Plarium announced the fusion, the Halloween fusion that's going to start next week. And I wanted to talk to you about her and about her companion champion as well. They've decorated like the Bastion with Halloween decoration. Always good Plarium, please do more of that. We can see here Death Knight popping out of his coffin um, near the tavern. And Madame Sir is sitting in front of the market. Lots of pumpkins around, so yeah. Nice view, thanks for the visuals, even on the events tabs and everything, so this is nice. Uh, please do more of that. Let's now, talk about the fusion now. And by the way, I have a huge surprise that I'm going to announce along with a few videos that I've recorded next week. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. You won't want to miss that. As you probably saw from the video title, I'm not super hyped about this champion. And I want to highlight a few points in her kit. We have to review her kit side by side with Hansel. Hansel and Gretel, of course, is the theme for this Halloween. So I'll talk about her kit. She's going to be the fusion that's going to be starting next week. He's He might be a guaranteed champion that they will release soon. Why I think that there's a good chance they will give us like that champion Hansel as a guaranteed champion because he's not super powerful. So if you were hoarding resources for months waiting for like an OP deal that Pl Plarium will release, this is not it. Just to be clear about that before even discussing the kits or anything. So her kit, they have good synergy together. And that's why I'm saying that I'm going to compare their kits side by side. Her A1 applies decreased defense, so does need accuracy. His A1 applies weaken. So if you have them both, what will happen if they are both in the same team? These A1s are going to be AoE, so great for Hydra, for example. And she'll apply decreased defense, he'll apply weaken. So just with the A1, they hit AoE and they apply decreased defense and weaken. That's really good if you have both of them. If you only have the fusion, it's a single target A1 that will apply decreased defense. And of course, it will require accuracy to do so. Her A2 is a strong one is a very good and strong one if her attack multipliers when they play test her next week show that they are good then she's going to be a good damage dealer it's a four hitter so good for fire knight for example or any other areas and good to avoid like ultimate death knight passive rotos passive she's forced she's strong affinity against rotos for example so she hits four times ignoring defense and if she kills an enemy which she has very good chance to do if she got good multiplier she's going to reset the cooldown of the skill and give herself 50 percent turn meter meaning that the next time she can repeat this skill again and again her a3 is an aoe hit we will see how hard it hits but it will decrease the turn meter of all enemies by 25%. If she got Hansel on the team with her, it's going to decrease all the turn meter of all enemies by 50% and it doesn't need any accuracy. You'll still need accuracy for the A1 though. So if you have them both, this is a very strong move, especially on a three turn cooldown. So you can just go from the A3 back to the A2, then to the A3. She will be doing a lot of damage, whether in PvE like Hydra or, of course, in Arena. Her passive might be designed to counter Mythicals because what her passive does is that whenever an enemy takes like uh, an extra turn, which is most common in Arena, uh, when Mythicals change form, she will just give herself 50% turn meter. And if Hansel is on the same team, she will also give him 50% turn meter. If we compare this to his kit, he is not the fusion. We don't have any information yet about how you can acquire him, but because they are both strong and stronger together, but not OP or meta or anything, I'm not expecting them to be. I might be proven wrong. That's why possibly they'll just give us Hansel as a guaranteed champion in the next two, three weeks. Or maybe from, I don't know, a deck of fate or something. So his A1 and A2 are very similar to hers with a bit of difference there. The main thing is that the A3, so her A3 is going to push back the turn meter of everyone. So she, she should be faster than him. And it doesn't need accuracy if he's on the same team. And if you have him on the same team, this AoE skill, his A3, is going to like set the cooldown of all the enemy champions by two turns and it does not require accuracy. So if we ignore the accuracy need for the A1 for the decreased defense and weaken, though they are not bad, only the A3s are super strong. If you pair them together in Arena, if you have both of them, she will push the turn meter back without an accuracy need and he will put them on cooldown. And if their damage multipliers 
are good enough, that means that they can be meta in arena, if you care about that stuff, but also they will be good everywhere. Of course, like the, the cooldown and the turn meter push might not work with most of the bosses PvE, but definitely both of them will play a role in the PvP though, I'm sure that most of you like are interested more in PvM progression than arena. If you are arena focused, this Deyu might change the meta. We'll see when they play test them next week. Why I was saying in the title that she's not that good because we have to judge her on her own. You might not have Plarium keeps inflating and increasing the cost of guaranteed events. We have no idea how are the, they going to price Hansel. Will it be Sacred Shards? Will it be Ancients? Uh, I don't know. Of course, it's not going to, to be Voids. Will it be Soul Stones again, like what they did for, with Freya? So, uh, champ training. They've hit us with like 20 champ training events in the last only few weeks. So, we have no way of judging now that you'll be able, I'm talking about low spender, free to play, in game players, players with a bunch of resources, more than what the fusion will require, to know whether we can get our hands on Hansel or not. So, we have to judge her on her own. And on her own, she's a good damage dealer that will require accuracy. When I'm saying a good damage dealer, the caveat there is that we have not seen her multipliers yet. We'll see them early next week when the content creators test her on the test server. So she can be a good damage dealer with a turn meter push and a decreased defense single target that will require accuracy. Of course, part of the hype that like what I don't like that some of the bigger content creators do is that every new release champion, every fusion is OP and meta changing. This can be misleading and I don't want anyone to like deplete all of the resources or buy packs to get this champion, uh, assuming that it's going to be a uh, account changing based on what the content creator said, while it's not. Thor was great. I hyped Thor with you. I went for the soul. I told you he can be account changing and I've seen, I've shown you how he changed my free to play account early mid game in game. Thor was able to change all account levels but Gretel will not do so she will just be a good damage dealer with a decent kit feel free to skip her or um, like personally I'm skipping her for reasons that I'll talk about in the next few videos but the main thing is that she's good she's just a damage dealer with a half decent kit with Hansel she's stronger without Hansel she's okay-ish but not top tier she might not even be mid tier without Hansel next to her this one in my opinion is skippable and we'll talk more about her kit if anything change when they test her with Hansel of course I release a video telling you I was wrong and you should go for her and all of that good stuff but as of now don't buy into the hype she's good but she's not great she's not OP she's not made a changing these are my two cents thank you for tuning in today stay tuned for the big surprise next week and I'll see you next time bye